Good morning. Pastor Sean here on Tuesday, October 6th, with your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Our text for today is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 17. And getting into the boat, he crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say? Um, I'm sorry, which is easier? To say, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and went home. And when the crowd saw it, they were afraid, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to men. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat and drink, eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Then the disciples of John came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch tears away from the old garment, from the garment, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins. If it is, the skins burst and the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. In many various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. All right, so um, what I would uh, focus on, or what, I, what I'm going to focus on <laughs> today, is the uh, first seven verses with uh, Jesus healing the paralytic. There's a couple cool things going on here. Um, now, obviously, that, um, you know, Jesus, well, first of all, the, the thing that kind of jumps out, and it's not exactly clear, but I think it's an, it's an interesting thing where it says, Behold, some people brought to him a paralytic. So there's a group of people who bring a paralytic to Jesus lying on a bed. And it says, When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, your son, your sins are forgiven. Um, and then we go on from there, but just want to look at that real quick because it's not, it's not exactly clear because he does say when Jesus saw their faith, is he talking about there as in the people who brought the paralytic? Is he talking about there meaning the people who brought the paralytic and the paralytic? Okay. Not, not really, um, like I said, not very clear which of that he's, he's referring to, but if we take some of the other examples of, of healings that Jesus does, you know, oftentimes he'll, he'll, he sees the person's faith who come, who comes to him, either the person coming to him and saying, you know, heal my daughter or, 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 you know, who's, who's sick themselves. And he, he notices their faith and it's like talking to the one who, who's directly appealing. And so here he says that he saw their faith, the people who brought the paralytic. And see, I tend to read this where he's looking at the people who brought the paralytic. Not to say that the paralytic didn't have faith, but he's, he's referring to them. And the cool thing about that is that if, if, if that's the proper way to understand that, then what Jesus is responding to is their faith. So they know 
that you know they they love this person. Obviously, they want this person to be healed. So they've brought him to Jesus because they know that he can heal them. You know, even if they maybe not un- don't fully understand who he is, they trust in him to bring healing. So um, he responds to their faith and and takes care of the paralytic. So right off the bat, is this is just a, a wonderful kind of encouragement for us that we should always be praying for people, that we should always intercede for others before God, that if there's anybody who we care for, and even those who we don't care for especially, but anybody at all, who, you know, we should be praying for them. We should ask God to do these things, um, to bring healing in t- to them, to, uh, to restore them, to bring them to faith, you know, whatever it is, because, you know, God listens to our prayers and, and he responds to us. Uh, and especially when we are um, bringing the needs of others to him. So that's just kind of a great thing right there. But what, what also, you know, they bring Jesus, uh, Jesus as paralytic. Obviously, the problem is he can't, he can't walk. He's unable to get around by himself. So they place him in front of Jesus, say, okay, here's the problem. And what does Jesus do? He says, um, take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. Which right off the bat shows that, you know, Jesus, Jesus knows our real problem, you know, because our eyes only see the external stuff. You know, there's a paralyzed man. He needs to be able to walk. And Jesus looks at him and says, he's got a bigger problem. (laughs) He needs his sins forgiven. And that's exactly what Jesus says. Your sins are forgiven. And, um... You know, it, it, we don't know what would have happened if if the scribes there didn't kind of press upon him and say, oh, he's blaspheming. Because it, it almost, as you read this, he um, he says, rise, pick up your mat and go home in response to their unbelief. Which, even right there, is is amazing because you say he responds to the, the, the friends of the paralytic. He responds to their belief by forgiving the paralytic sins. He responds to the scribes' unbelief by giving him physical healing. Um, which is kind of, I mean, it's just, it's so cool how this works where he responds in faith by forgiving sins. He responds to unbelief by healing. Um, everything Jesus responds to is, is just to restore us. Um, and it's just kind of a a cool thing that goes on there. But, um, like I said, if, you know, it's hard to say what Jesus would have done if he didn't respond to the scribes' unbelief. Would he have left him paralyzed? I mean, likely not, since he's been healing and this is kind of what he does. But it's just interesting how his, his first and total focus is, I need to forgive sins. And so it is a good reminder for us that um, you know, when we are going through whatever, you know, difficulties, pains, hardships, you name it, you know, and we we often look at our lives and say, "This is this is my biggest problem right now, and I need I need God to to fix this." Um, it's always good to take a moment and and just kind of center yourself and say, "Okay, my biggest problem is I need forgiveness, my unbelief. You know, I believe, help my unbelief, kind of thing." And so the the nice kind of practical result of of coming to that realization of knowing what your greatest need is and who fills that need, Jesus, is that it it reorients the way you see everything. So that way, you know, when we focus so much on on our physical uh, problems, our our emotional, the stuff, the spiritual, whatever, if if it's anything other than, you know, focusing on Jesus and what he brings to us, and we're we're focused on all this stuff and like, oh, and we're we're anxious, we're worried, we're, we're, we're stressed, when we stop for a moment and say, you know what? Yes, these are problems. Yes, these are issues. No, this isn't good. But my biggest issue is that I'm a sinner. I need to trust in Christ. I need to ask him to forgive me. And actually, I, I just need to believe that he's forgiven me already. You know, certainly he wants me to ask him, but he's already forgiven me on the cross. And so um, when we refocus like that and say, well, this is my biggest problem, sin. Christ has already taken care of it. Well, then we can approach all these other things with a, a confidence and a hope, knowing that, you know what? My biggest problem has been resolved. So I know that Christ will be with me through this. I can, I can deal with this, or I can survive this, or <laughs> I won't survive this, but Jesus is with me and is going to be on the other side of this. So um, it's just a wonderful way of, of reorienting the way we see things uh, in, in our lives. So that's all coming out of Jesus healing the paralytic there. Um, so a wonderful, wonderful little text for us today.
All right, well, let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you've safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that we, this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this is a, a great start to your uh, Tuesday, and uh, peace be with you.